Hello again and welcome to another musing from Ottery St Mary Parish Church. My name's Colin, thank you Fiona for last Sunday's one. There's a social media post that often does the rounds that asks a question that's something like this. It says, um, name something from your childhood that children these days would not understand. Can you think of how you might answer that? I think for, for me, it might be something as simple as like dialing a phone number, literally putting your finger in a circular hole and turning it in an arc um, several times to telephone somebody. Or it might be taking your film in and then waiting several days to have your photographs developed. Or it might be going to a public phone box and ringing my parents and for a catch up and then ringing me back um, um, to, to just catch up with, with how we are. They're all experiences that a young person today would not be able to identify with. It's quite an interesting question because if you are a similar age to me, you'll identify with my examples. But if you are older than me or younger than me, your examples will be different because times are changing. And if anything, it's accelerating how times are changing. One thing I remember about my childhood is that my mum and dad were religious, religious um, subscribers to Witch Magazine. So I'm sure you're used to Witch Magazine and its, its format. I, as far as I know, it's still a mag monthly magazine now. Um, so each month they would test some kind of appliances. Uh, so it might be washing machines or it might be um, tin openers or it might be um, watering cans and for whatever it was they were testing um, at the end of the article they would they, they would have rated each of the ones that they tested for how robust it was or uh, for how good it was at cleaning your clothes or whatever it might be that that um, thing would be useful for and and then they'd have like best buys um, so they might have a best budget buy so if you don't have much money, this would be excellent value for money. Or if you did have a bit more money, this would be a best buy uh, for something different. Um, uh, they'd even have don't buys for uh, ones that break easily or just aren't very effective at what they're supposed to be doing. I can remember I, w I, I used Mum and Dad's uh, witch magazines the f when I bought my first microwave and when I bought my first television. Um, in fact, even when they bought my, my, my first um, video tape recorder, that's another thing you could add to the list of things that young people would not be able to identify with in this Netflix generation. There'd be indexes. So even if it wasn't something that which had tested this month or last month, you could find out the most recent issue where they had tested that thing and look up what their recommendations were then. Now I'm going to make a, an allegation here, a, a, an express an opinion of which I have no basis whatsoever. Um, I even tried to look up some factual information on this um, and, and, it, and it, I couldn't find it. Um, but I, I would suggest, I would guess that which magazine's subscription figures are nothing today compared with what they were when I was a young person growing up. I may be wrong. The reason why I say that is that times have changed. And back when I was a, a young person growing up at home, leaving home, there was a, a certain respect given for anyone in authority. So which magazine would have 
respect, people would, would like to know, what do the experts say? Well, the people that have really tested several of these, what are their viewpoints? But times have changed. So now, the legal system, schools, politics, um, none of these areas do the experts there carry the automatic respect that they once did. There's just been too many scandals and too much hypocrisy, too much has been revealed that in the end people just aren't so sure. So now you get a head teacher, they're not automatically respected. Uh, a politician says something, um, a judge says something, um, even in the churches, the, the vicar or the bishop or the archbishop says something. And whereas at one time they had a certain respect innate just because of their standing, um, they are an expert in their field. Now it, it isn't, people are a little bit more likely to be a little skeptical of what they say and maybe a little bit suspicious. Just as I was um, putting these thoughts together this week, it's been, uh, there's been a, a, an item in the news of a lady who was uh, snatched on her way home from a friend's house and she was, she was taken on a, on a busy road. She was just walking along the busy road and she was taken and terribly, she was uh, taken away and raped and then murdered, strangled. And the police followed all the leads. And when they arrested the man who was responsible, who in the end admitted his guilt in court, it was, an, it was a serving police officer that they'd arrested. Um, the, the police commissioner was in court um, when he admitted his guilt and she said outside afterwards that she felt sickened, angered and devastated by his crimes. She said they're dreadful and everyone in policing feels betrayed. There's just been too many scandals, too much hypocrisy. So people are just that much more careful about who they listen to and whether they believe them. You've probably been in that situation sometimes, I know I have sometimes, when leading up to some kind of election and, and you look at the possibilities and sometimes you look at them and you think, I don't want to vote for any of them. Too much hypocrisy too many scandals. Who was Jesus angry about? Interestingly enough, it wasn't who we might have guessed. It wasn't the immoral. It, it wasn't those that did not say their prayers or honour the Lord. It was actually the religious leaders in the temple. In Matthew 23, it's like a, almost like a rant. Um, Jesus is speaking against the religious leaders. And at least six times he says the phrase, woe betide you. But he isn't talking about criminals. He's not talking to prostitutes. He's not talking to people that have a different faith. He's talking to the religious leaders and he's saying to them, woe betide you. He says, woe betide, woe betide you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You lock up the kingdom of heaven in front of people's faces. You don't go in yourselves and when other people try to enter, you stop them. Those were the kind of people 
that Jesus spoke most strongly to. A little bit further along, same chapter, he says, Woe betide you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You tithe mint and dill and cumin, and you omit the serious matters of the law, like justice, mercy and loyalty. You should have done these without neglecting the others. He's saying you do these little petty small things and you miss the really chunky, important, vital bits. And he said you should do those big significant things and also do the little things. So what are some of the things that really seemed to matter to Jesus? Well, he mentioned some of them there. Justice, mercy, loyalty. Those are the ones that he talked about there as being really important issues for people to note and, and follow. There was another point where uh, somebody said to Jesus, of, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And he, he didn't say pray, saying your prayers or reading the scriptures or um, being living morally well. You know, th th those might be considered as some of the, perhaps the smaller things that Jesus would say, you mustn't neglect those as well. But when Jesus answered, the really sizable things that he said were loving the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your mind and soul and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself. Those were like, they're really, he said that there's no more important commandments than those. He said they, they sum up all the other laws. Those were the kind of things that Jesus was saying, that is really significant. That really matters a lot. So, if which magazine doesn't get the respect that it used to be and politicians don't and head teachers don't and judges don't then who do people turn to to get their sense of recommendations and what what, what would be good to do well in a moment i'm going to suggest to you that i think it's actually people going to their peers. It's our peers who have the most influence on our choices and our decisions. But before we talk about that, we're going to take a break and I'm going to introduce you to a song um, which actually talks about the very opposite of hypocrisy and the opposite of causing a scandal and being, it being revealed that we're not who we should be. And this is a song that encourages us to listen better. It, it encourages us away from just saying the first thing that comes into our heads. Uh, it encourages us away from speaking just to lift our own profile in the eyes of other people. And instead, it encourages us to listen well. Uh, there's a nice line, it says, if we listen well, there's a harmony that we'll never have heard before. So this is a song by Crystal Wells and this is called Down, Down, Low. Sometimes you gotta go dark Sometimes you gotta be quiet Sometimes you gotta get far From the voices that stir up violence Everybody wants to talk Nobody wants to listen Everybody wants to talk Nobody wants to listen You gotta get, get, get Down, down low You gotta turn, turn, turn it Down, down low You gotta take it, take it, take it Down, down low You gotta get down low Sometimes you gotta go first Sometimes you gotta be sorry Sometimes you're gonna get hurt And go back to where you started Everybody wants to win Nobody wants to listen Everybody wants to win Nobody wants to listen You gotta get, get, get Down, down low You gotta turn, turn, turn it Down, down low You gotta take it, take it, take it Down, down low Song that 
Sometimes you gotta be quiet Sometimes you gotta get far From the voices that stir up violence Everybody wants to talk Nobody wants to listen Everybody wants to talk Nobody wants to listen You gotta get, get, get down, down low You gotta turn, turn, turn it down, down low So it's not experts necessarily anymore that we trust um, to find out the truth about something. It's actually our peers that we're much more likely to be influenced by. If you buy something now, um, most retailers, many retailers, certainly online, it's, it's really easy for you to see what other people say who've bought that same product. So if I buy something at a garden center or at a DIY shop, I can read reviews left by other people. And it's very easy to see, well, on average, you know, 90% of them really liked it. That's good enough for me. Um, or I can go to the reviews and I can deliberately just look at the positive reviews and see of the people that really loved this product, what was it that they appreciated about it? Or I could go to the very negative reviews, my mum does this, go to the very negative reviews and see of the people that really regretted buying this, what was the reason why they regretted buying it? And I'm much more likely now to be swayed by other people like me who've really experienced this product uh, in deciding whether this is a product that I'd like to put my money into. Sometimes it's not even formal feedback. If you were buying a new car or buying a new lawnmower, you're much more likely these days, I believe, to be influenced by your neighbour, say, and, and, and the last experience they had in, in buying a lawnmower or a car, or the guy that you meet at the gym when you're changing together and, and what their experience was the last time they bought a car, or what their own car is like at the moment. So it's peers that are much more influential now than necessarily the people in authority or the experts. Do you remember Simon Franklin? If you've been in Ottery St. Mary Parish Church, you'll remember him as a previous vicar. And I can remember, do you remember Simon doing this? I can remember sometimes, you know, several times, I can remember Simon perhaps reading a passage from the Bible and telling us at the end of this, I'm gonna ask you what this means. And I, and I really want to know. And he would encourage some kind of discussion, some kind of exploration together that, that you might have some insight on this that, that might help me or I might say something about it that might be an eye-opener to you. And nobody thought he's supposed to be the expert and he's asking for our help. Um, actually, that's much more likely that we would learn from one another these days than we would automatically listen to the expert up at the front that is going to tell us the answers. Maybe Jesus, I'm talking about this as a, as a, as a current um, culture, but even Jesus, he was a little bit more like that than speaking directly. So it says that Jesus didn't teach them anything except using parables. Jesus never spoke except using parables. That's what it says in, in Mark and in Matthew. And he'd say things that would leave people going away saying, well, what did he mean by that? It, he'd be deliberately provoking you to have a discussion on your way home. Well, what did he mean when he said that if salt loses its saltiness, it's no good for anything. And, and he was encouraging you to have some kind of dis What did he mean when he said, if your eye sins, you'd be better off gouging it out um, and, and living without an eye? Um, he'd say things that would make you talk about it 
uh, when you got home uh, to try and get to the bottom of where he what he was saying he he didn't just tell you the fact and expect you to believe it he wanted you to wrestle with it and find out an answer with your friends and with your family it reminds me on the road to Emmaus um, it says you got those two people Jesus had died and there were two people walking along the road and it says they were discussing with each other all the various things that had taken place and then you remember that Jesus came along and walked with them and he ended up talking them through all the different scriptures and and and, and revealing uh, what it said in them and then afterwards after he'd gone uh, from their eyes they said to each other do you remember how our hearts were burning within us as he talked to us on the road as he opened up the Bible for us. Jesus was coming alongside them in their talking and I wonder whether Jesus does the same today. I wonder whether when you're talking with your friend or talking with your husband or your wife or talking with your sister, or, I wonder whether Jesus is coming alongside you in that conversation and opening your eyes and bringing revelation and so that sometimes afterwards you can be saying well didn't 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 our hearts burn inside us when we were uh, exploring those things together these days maybe you'll learn less from the experts and more from one another i'm sure that um you're excited about our new rector Lydia Cook arriving in October and I'm excited about that too and uh, I'm, I'm really looking for I expect she'll be great but I suspect that she's unlikely to be thinking right the best thing is is for you guys to invite all your friends to come along on a Sunday morning and listen to the wisdom that I will impart and uh, then go away um, changed. Um, she probably doesn't think that she is going to be that expert um, and she probably doesn't think that your friends would necessarily be won over by her if you did do that. She might well be coming thinking that actually a better job for her to do is to encourage you she might think that actually you have more influence in your circles um, than she would and she might love to equip and encourage you to have more of an impact at your Pilates class or at that gardening club that you're part of or on those afternoons when you're looking after your grandchildren or just spending time with extended family those might be you might be the one that is more likely to have an impact on your friends than the expert would maybe which magazine will retain its integrity and maybe it's still respected now maybe it'll still be respected in the future I don't know but I do know that people take a lot of notice of their peers and if you can be like Jesus amongst your friends you are going to have more of an influence with them than an expert would be able to. I wonder if we could pray together would you be comfortable if we did that? Let's just invite Jesus to come alongside us now like he did with that, those two people on the road to Emmaus. We welcome you Jesus. Come alongside us now. May we be aware of your presence. May our hearts burn within us. Open our eyes to whatever you'd like to say to us now.
in our prayers today, I wonder if we could have a time of saying sorry and a time of saying please. So let's say sorry first. I've got a, a another passage, difficult passage of Jesus to read. So this is from Matthew 15. He says, you play actors. I think he was talking to the religious leaders again. You play actors, actors in a play. Isaiah had the right words for you in his prophecy. This people gives me honor with their lips. Their heart, however, holds me at arm's length. The worship which they offer me is vain because they teach as law mere human precepts. Lord, I'm, I'm sorry for ways in which I've been hypocritical. Times in which I've been playing a role and pretending to be something I'm not. Father, please forgive me for those times. You made me well. And I want, I don't, I don't want to pretend to be something else. I'm sorry for times that I've honored you with my lips and yet my heart has been holding you at arm's length. God, I do want to honor you with my lips but I want my heart to be loving towards you. I want to be fully in there. I don't want to hold you at a distance. I don't want my worship to be in vain. I don't want to teach as if it was law, things that some human has made up. I want to make a big thing out of the things that you say, Jesus, are the big things. Loving you, loving other people, mercy and justice. So having said sorry, let's say please. And I wonder whether as we pray, you could think of a a place where you regularly spend time, where there's the opportunity where you could have a positive impact. So it might be a dance class or a walking group, or it might be a, a business or a shop that you go into regularly. Um, just somewhere where you talk with people. It may be the neighbor over the wall. Um, it may be a brother that you have that you talk to on the phone. See so if you can picture somewhere where you often spend time where there's the possibility that you could have a positive influence on somebody else. Father, in this place that I'm thinking of now, would you help me to demonstrate a godly character? Not because I grit my teeth and try, but Holy Spirit, would you come and fill me to such a way that actually I do demonstrate godly character, even when I'm not even thinking about anything. I'm not even aware that that's what I'm doing. Would you help me in this place that I'm thinking of to just do things well, to put my best effort, produce quality work, speak honestly. Would you enable me to show grace and love in this place that I'm thinking of? May the fruits of the Spirit overflow out of me when I'm in this situation. 
would you help me to make the culture better, just the way that things are done in that place? Would you enable me to have a positive influence about that, about what we talk about, the kind of language we use, how we speak about other people? how we care for people and value other people. And would you help me there, Lord, to speak up when necessary for truth and for justice, not to keep silent, but to be willing to speak when something needs to be said. And would you give me the grace to do that in a way that actually is clear that I'm actually on side, I'm not criticizing, I'm, I'm just, calling us to be better. Lord, bless this place where I'm thinking of now and bless my part in it. May it make a big impact for your glory. Amen. It's good. So you don't need Lydia to come and speak at that place. You want God to equip you to be a difference in that place. We're going to finish with another song. I don't know how old this song is. It must be at least 30 years, I reckon, um, that it was recorded. And it's called Praise Him. So, here's a song called Praise Him.
Thank you, Jesus. It's been lovely to spend time with you. Um, Sid Humphreys, I think, is doing the musing next week. I'll see you again. Bye.